Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, lessons 19-4 and 19-5 combined. We're looking at congruence and symmetry. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Leonardo da Vinci. He said, It had long since come to my attention that people of accomplishment rarely sat back and let things happen to them. They went out and happened to things. I think that's really cool. I hope that you guys grow up and, and are the kind of people that go out and happen to things instead of just sitting around letting things happen to you and control your life. I hope you're the one making the decisions and choices in your life. Our learning goal tonight is to determine whether figures are congruent and whether a shape has rotational symmetry. Um, Leonardo da Vinci was an, a famous artist, an, an amazing artist, and an amazing inventor. He lived a really long time ago in the 1400s. And um, he designed a mechanical lion, and we have the designs for this on paper. And so um, a group of people went together, and they have a museum now where they tried to construct all of his designs. This one was called the Mechanical Lion, and when the lion's chest opened, their chest opened up, lilies would come out of it. So you can see right there what it looks like in real life, and um, you can look up his designs and see what it looked like in his designs. It's actually pretty incredible. Our individual lesson learning goals are to identify congruent figures, identify similar figures, determine whether a figure has line symmetry, you probably did that in fourth grade too, and determine whether a figure has rotational symmetry, which I believe is new for you this year. There's the Mona Lisa, that's probably his most famous painting. That's not just there's Mona Lisa, but there's the Mona Lisa. Our vocabulary tonight starts with congruent, and congruent means the figures have, two figures, have the same size and the same shape. If they are similar, they are the same shape, but they're different sizes. So you're gonna see some examples of that. Line symmetry is when you can fold a figure into two equal parts, same size, same shape, and they would fit on top of each other exactly and their edges would line up perfectly. The fold line is called the line of symmetry and a lot of shapes have lines of symmetry and a lot of shapes have more than one line of symmetry. So we're gonna be looking at some of those. Um, rotational symmetry is when a figure rotates onto itself in less than one full rotation. Here are some examples of congruence. We would say, you notice there are kind of two different words there. We use the word, the figures are congruent, and then we have examples of congruence. So look at the first two arrows going across the top. You can tell very easily that those two arrows pointing in the same direction are the same size and the same shape. We could just take one and push it right over on top of the other one, it would line up perfectly. The arrows below that, however, are pointing in different directions and that makes it a little bit harder to tell. That's when we might take our pencil or a piece of paper and kind of measure it out and make sure they're the same size. It is hard to tell when they're pointing different directions. In this case, both of those arrows are still the same size, same shape. Those smaller triangles are also same size, same shape. They don't have to be pointing in the same direction. They just have to be able to be rotated and translated so that they fit over each other perfectly, okay? The two triangles on the bottom, obviously that's a reflection. They are a perfect reflection, same size, same shape. Just one is a reflection of the other. Here are some examples of similar, and that is a really cool example of something Leonardo da Vinci designed. I think he hoped that someday he would actually fly in it, but we don't have any records of him actually flying. But, um, think it wasn't that you know it was many many hundreds of years later that they actually started making planes where they could fly so he was really ahead of his time the triangles on the top are the exact same shape they're both triangles but they are different sizes so they are similar but they are not exactly the same so they are not congruent the squares on the bottom again exact same shape they're both squares but they are only similar because they are not the same size so they would not be congruent, but they would be similar. Here are some examples of line symmetry. You did this in fourth grade, but I wanted to review it with you. Um, it's a lot easier, I think, to do line symmetry when we actually have the shape cut out on paper, and we can actually 
draw a line of symmetry, like right down the center here, and fold it over on itself to see if it lines up perfectly. You can see my hands line up perfectly, so if I fold them on that line of symmetry, if I folded it down, they don't line up perfectly if I used to, you know, folded them over a horizontal line. So that isosceles triangle that we have that has a number one, it only has one line of symmetry. If I fold it in half lengthwise, it does have line symmetry. But if I fold it any other way, it will not match up perfectly. If you notice that line goes all the way through the figure, it has arrows on both sides, sides of it, that is only one line of symmetry. And that's important as we add lines of symmetry, you're gonna see more and more arrows coming out of both sides. Don't be tempted to count them twice. Let's look at that rhombus in the middle. It has one line of symmetry if you folded it lengthwise or vertically, if you folded it over a vertical line. And then if you folded it horizontally or over a horizontal line, it also um, has a line of symmetry. It would match up perfectly. But when I'm counting the lines of symmetry, I don't just go around and count one, two, three, four, because some of those are the same lines. They're just the other end of the same line. So I'm very careful to number my lines of symmetry to make sure that I'm actually only counting one line at a time. On that equilateral triangle, I have three lines of symmetry. And you may want to cut yourself an equilateral triangle and try this. If you fold on those lines of symmetry that I've drawn, it will always line up perfectly. Those edges will always line up, especially if you measure it to make sure your sides are equal. Um, if you notice, in a regular polygon, meaning a shape or figure that has sides of equal length, you can count the corners. However many corners that shape has, that's how many lines of symmetry it will have. That is only true in regular polygons. If the sides are different lengths, that will not be the case at all. As in an isosceles triangle, even though it has three corners, it only has one line of symmetry because the sides are not equal lengths. Um, looking at the pentagon in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, that is a regular pentagon, and I checked it with my pen. I measured each, each side to make sure that they were all the same length, and then I knew because it had five corners that it had five lines of symmetry. If you notice something, those lines of symmetry don't go through the corners. It goes through one corner and then goes through the base that's opposite that corner. And each of those lines of symmetry will do that. They'll start off going through a corner and then go through the opposite side. So I've again numbered them so that you can see. I went ahead and numbered just the lines of symmetry that run through the corners. So here are some examples of rotational symmetry. Rotational symmetry is when you have a shape, like the shape of this paper. Here, this is my daughter's spelling paper, Brayden's, and you can see her alphabet running across the top. If when you rotate it, the paper looks exactly the same shape, then you have rotational symmetry. Before you rotate it one full turn, let me show you what I mean. Here, we have our rectangle with the long side and the short side. It looks different. Now it looks the same, but I still, this is at the bottom, so I haven't made a full rotation yet. It looks different, and now it's the same. So it does have rotational figure of symmetry. <coughs> <clears throat> that rhombus at the top also has rotational symmetry. If I rotate it clockwise 90 degrees, it looks the same. If I rotate it 90 more degrees clockwise, now the point is at the bottom, it still looks the same. If I rotate it another 90 degrees, which is a full 270 degrees from my starting point, it still looks the same. So that has quite a few orders, that's what they're called, orders of rotation, um, in its rotational symmetry. Um, let's look at that arrow down below. You can see, even, every even when I rotate it, it doesn't look the same until I've rotated it all the way around to the original starting point. So that figure, that arrow, does not have rotational symmetry. We're going to do some practice now. Number one, are these figures, that rhombus or square there, are these figures congruent or similar? Pause it and push play when you've written it down. Did you write congruent? 
It's hard to tell sometimes when figures are rotated differently, but this is the exact same size and the exact same shape, so they are congruent. Number two, are these figures congruent or similar? Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write similar? They're the exact same shape, they're both circles, but they are different sizes, so they are similar, but not congruent. Number three, how many lines of symmetry does this figure have? That's a right triangle. Um, and you might wanna cut out a right triangle on a piece of paper. You could do it pretty easily by just cutting right along here and seeing how many lines of symmetry you could find by folding your paper exactly in half and having your edges meet up perfectly. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write one? The line of symmetry runs right through that right angle and through the opposite side, halfway in the middle of that opposite side, what we call the hypotenuse in a right triangle. Number four, does this figure have rotational symmetry? You may wanna draw that figure on your paper and then turn it to see if it has rotational symmetry. Does it look the same before you have rotated 360 degrees? Try it and push play when you're ready. Did you write yes? It actually looks the same several times before you've rotated it 360 degrees. So it does have rotational symmetry. It's time to challenge yourself. There's a rectangle. What is the smallest degree of rotation that will rotate this rectangle onto itself. Remember, we generally talk in terms of 90 degree rotations. That's turning your paper one time, 180 degree rotations, 270 degree rotations, and now we're back to 360 degrees. Any of those choices will work. Bring your answer back tomorrow and we'll go over it in class. Finishing up. I know a lot of this is review. You did a lot of it in fourth grade. Um, the rotational symmetry is probably the only thing that's new. And maybe learning that in a regular polygon, you can count the corners, um, the points, and then find out how many lines of symmetry you have. That might be new too. Um, write down any questions you still have and write down, was this hard for you or do you still need some more practice? Do you need some questions answered? And supersymmetry, you have completed lessons 19-4 and 19-5, congruence and symmetry. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.